guide dogs. Previously on the journey of a guide dog, we found out how guide dog puppies are looked after in our volunteer breeding dog holders' homes. And Tim took us through the early stages of development from birth to eight weeks old. to be a puppy raiser, it's doing something that's going to help somebody in the future. I mean, seeing guide dogs out and about and being involved in training a puppy from a young age to actually being a working guide dog. I think it's a really special thing to be involved in. Vera's now nine weeks old. She's actually the grand pup of our first puppy that we raised. So we have Poppy, who's the grandma, then we've got Riley, who's the mummy, and then Vera is the little puppy that we have. And she's a black golden retriever lab. There was a lot of excitement when Vera came to our house and she's settled in beautifully. As a puppy development advisor, I would be going out fairly regularly to do face-to-face -face visits. We also use online tools like Zoom can be really helpful. We run puppy classes and there's always someone at the end of the phone um, should they need any further support around that as well. When Vera arrived, she came with collars, leads, because you get different types of leads for the age of the puppy, different size collars, the medication that's needed for the worming, flea treatments. There's a grooming kit in there as well because later on you'll be taught how to groom the puppy and the details for ordering all their puppy food. In this first few weeks of raising a puppy, really the importance is introducing them gradually to all of those things that they're going to be doing a lot later on. We're looking at the association of putting a vocal cue with the toilet training because it's going to be really important for the dogs to know that later down the line. We're also making sure that she's positively introduced to the equipment that she's going to be wearing as well. So that collar, we want her to be nice and still while that collar's going on and happy with that approaching her. One way of introducing novel situations and items once the puppy's settled is actually by placing different things around the home or in the garden and just allowing puppy the time to go and explore and investigate those in its own time and also being rewarded for, um, for coming back to the handler at that time as well. So the next step on the journey after this first few weeks will be developing and building on what we've introduced at this stage. So that will be the puppy going further afield. So starting to walk on the lead, um, starting to see um, all of the things out there in the environment that they've not been used to, and then gradually building up to those other different environments. Currently we've got a lovely puppy called Sally, who's now 24, 25 weeks old and is a purebred lab, who is just a bundle of fun, bundle of energy. Being a puppy raiser for us involves a dog joining our life and staying with us and involving them in all aspects of family life. When we go out, they go out. When we go on public transport, they go on public transport. And it's just like having a really good family pet, but with a plus that there are some additional things that as a guide dog puppy, they need to be skilled at. When they're kind of between 12 and 14 weeks, that's when their mind is like a sponge. Now when they're at this age, that's when they've kind of formed those good habits that we like, but also starting to show a lot more of their character and can sometimes be a little bit cheeky in different environments. When Sally first came into our home, she was the best behaved little puppy I'd ever seen. I was shocked. She's brilliant. When they're about five to six months, they can start showing a little bit more of awareness of things. So at this age, it's building their confidence, keep working on that, and just building on the basics that they might have learned. So when the puppies, we might have introduced a sit. Now when they're about for five to six months, we might be introducing a sit with holding that duration, so how long they hold that sit for. So we introduce the puppy jacket when the puppy is around five months. 
When the puppy's six months, it can start wearing the puppy jacket. So we'll start off with just some associations in the home, and then over the duration of the month, we then get the puppy confident and happy wearing the jacket as well. So it's able to take that into different environments and they're not mouthing at it, they're not chewing it. They're just gonna show a nice relaxed body. Sally has been going on free runs since she was about 17 weeks. We led her off the lead in the field. Her recall's fantastic. We have no, no problems with her at all. She'll sort of turn around in mid-air, practically, to come <laughs> back. She's yep. great. Socialisation at this age, we might now start introducing them to public transport. So they're a little bit older, they're fully vaccinated as well, so we've got a little bit more freedom. Also, they've got more energy, so we can spend a little bit more time out and about with them before they get too tired. Again, looking at their growth and the health of the puppy as well, we don't want to be doing too much with them still at this age because they're still growing. It can depend on each individual dog, so some puppies might be a little bit more sensitive, so we might have to go a bit of a slower approach socialising. Some puppies, like Sally for an instance, she doesn't really show much when she's out and about that she might be a little bit wary or cautious of things, so we can progress with her. We've been volunteering for guide dogs for just over three years now. Um, this is Elizabeth and she's our second puppy. She comes shopping with us, we'll take her on buses, get her used to trains, getting her ready so that she can go into training. When we take Elizabeth into town or into a supermarket, she would wear her puppy coat with the guide dog sign on it and she would also wear a flash on her lead to show that she's a guide dog in training. A lot of puppy raisers like having the puppy jacket as well because it's more awareness of what they're doing so it kind of explains why this puppy's in the shop but someone's pet dog isn't. So we've been teaching Elizabeth the bucket game which basically involves a little bucket with lots of kibble and treats in and each time she looks at the bucket we'll give her a treat. This is to help with cooperative care so that eventually when she does go to the vet she'll be settled in that environment with them being able to do an examination on her with her being comfortable and happy. So at the age of 12 months, all of our puppies are neutered. That's really important that this is done before they go into their training stage. So we make sure they're fully recovered from that. I think the best thing about being a puppy raiser is knowing that you're helping to change someone's life and that the dog that you're raising is gonna do something amazing for someone. The fact that they're life changing for somebody uh, means everything to us, doesn't it? Yeah. Oh gosh, it means a lot to us. But then it's giving something back. It's a feeling of contributing, really. Mm. <laughs> Never had a dog. All of a sudden, I've got three of them in my house. I mean, that's how lovely it is to be involved in it. You see the puppies growing, you get involved with the charity. It's not just about the puppy, it's getting out and meeting people, the fundraising that you get involved in. Oh, it's always tears. You learn, learn to love them but at least you know they're actually going on to school and then hopefully to be matched with somebody. From once they finish their full-time training is they become a, a guide dog and that really is our probably most proud moment. And we get a little picture sent through to us and with her in our harness. I feel so yeah. proud. It's nice to know that we've done something that's helping someone and she's changing someone's life. And yeah, it makes me emotional. Yeah. <laughs> It's a feeling you get when they achieve what you've been trying to show them. It's a real like, yes, they finally got it. And I mean, when you go from that tiny little puppy that comes in and then you see it go through the training process, going off to school, it's, it's quite um, heartwarming. It's just like, ah, you know, I can't believe All our boys have been boys. through uni. And that's the feeling. And that is the feeling you get where, you know, that they, she's, oh, dear Lord. And they've got somebody and then changing this person's life. Yeah. But, all the, you know, for years. If someone was thinking of becoming a puppy raiser, I'd say, yes, go for it. It's absolutely brilliant. It's a lovely thing to be involved in. And it's not just you and the puppy. You go to puppy classes, you meet other people doing the same thing. Everyone should do it. <laughs> it's probably one of the best things we've done. Yeah. There's all the social side. You can meet up with them, go for coffee with them, because that's part of the puppy training, is going to coffee shops and sitting and having a coffee. So I'd say, yeah, absolutely brilliant. Just go for it. It's the joy that you get. Yeah. Is, for that year, it's worth every single tear when they go. It really it's is. Immeasurable fun. 
we have a look at the temperament of the dog. We look at the environment that it's been exposed to, if there's any more training needs. And then assuming they're progressing as they should be progressing, they will then be going on to their further training at one of the guide dogs' regional training centres. Coming up next, find out what our guide dog training involves at our guide dogs' regional centres. <laughs>